Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm going to attempt a quick tutorial today, a painting tutorial, on this little project here that I've had. It's on my desk. It's a little notepad holder. Uh, I did this in 04, I believe, and it was a chapter project, but I found these cute little um, picture frames at Michael's. These are a dollar, and I thought, okay, that's going to be perfect. The design will fit right here and I added a few other um, I think another daisy and here's one I just have the dowel that you use to um, stand the picture up I just washied that there so I don't lose it but basically this is the design that is on the notebook holder thing and then I did another one this one I actually freehanded everything because I wanted to see how it would be to show you that way because I think I'm gonna do that this is the one I did using the pattern so this has everything is placed exactly where her name is Margaret Wilson the woman who designed this piece it's in a book I'll show you so um, I'd like to get started um, gonna list the supplies in the um, the, the design, first of all, is in this book. It's called Better Homes and Gardens Painting Kitchen Decor. That's where I found it. And it is called On a Bright Note. And like I said, it's by Margaret Wilson. I don't know if the if she sells this in any other format, like in a, in a, a pattern packet or something. But it's really easy to uh, freehand. So that's what we're going to do. And the first thing you want to do... Is I'm, I will have the supplies listed as well, but I'm going to talk about those as we go. So I'm not going to do everything all at once. It's going to be as we go. So um, because the, I did this once already and it just took way too long. I kept going into detail and I think I just want to get to it. So um, basically, the first thing I do when I base coat, now this is called base coating, just getting the wooden piece covered with paint is because wood is a porous surface you have to seal it and I've used varnish as well to seal a piece you can use varnish you can use gesso or this is um, specifically to seal wood an all-purpose sealer and I mix it one to one so basically if I'm using about a quarter size of the sealer I use a quarter size of the paint color and mix them together and then I just base coat the whole thing with that and you can kind of see it has a little bit of a sheen to it. I have sanded this, but it's one thin coat. And then this one I've already added a second coat to. And I haven't sanded it because when you add paint to your wood, it brings the nap of the wood up. So this one is ready for a second coat. Now the second coat, so first thing you do is uh, all-purpose sealer and paint. Paint the whole thing, let it dry. Then I take... A piece of sandpaper and lightly sand it because it will bring up all the nap especially the edges of this wood you can actually use a little bit um, of a rough a coarser sandpaper but for this surface you really only need um, this is like a very fine sandpaper I don't know what 21 213Q means but it's a fine fine grit sandpaper um, and then sand it and you're gonna if you have I already I, when I base the back, I, I kind of added paint, but you can see there's bare spots and that's okay. The wood is sealed for art. See here's like bare spots. I'm going to cover that now. So basically the second coat, all you're going to need is two coats because I'm going to do a sponged background on this too. So I am putting out, um, what about a dime? Is that a nickel or a dime? And I'm using water in my brush this time instead of I'm gonna put this over here I'm right-handed oh my doggies barking um, gonna leave some water in my brush and kind of make a little slicker wetter puddle because it moves easier that way and I'm really loading this brush up this brush is a kind of a grungy brush that I only use for really this type of stuff and I'm just gonna give this a second coat you know what happened? It's around 6 o'clock. Actually, it's 6.30, I think. And it's cooling down, and people are going for walks outside, and she sees people out there now. I might need a little more paint. 
but see how nicely this is just really covering because I've wet it enough that it's moving so I'm actually just I just dipped in water and I'm just picking up what's on the plate just to get this covered and it'll be opaque when we're done we just want to cover a nice I just barely made it with that amount of paint to get this covered so we're going to set that aside, let it dry, but that's basically what you do. I already have one that's ready to go. And like I said, I mean, I would just, I'm going to gently sand this just so that I have a smooth surface to start out with. In this case, it isn't that important because we are going to um, sponge color on top of here and that will make it kind of textural. The sponging is going to be layers of, th it's three colors. So we're going to use um, a dark, a, a middle, and a light color. Let's see, not Cape Cod. Liberty Blue, that's our dark, and white. So it's actually blue and white with the gray that we just used to base coat. And I have these, this type of little, It's a, um, these are actually sea sponges. I just have pieces of sea sponges, but um, this will be fine. And I'm going to put a little bit of the base color out, a little bit of white, and a little bit of blue in puddles of their own. Oh, that's white and blue. And I'm going to kind of mix them on the sponge because you want this to be subtle and like washed out. So I'm going to wet this. I have a bucket of water over here. And I'm going to squeeze out the water so it's not drippy, but it's definitely wet. And I'm going to find a nice, I like this, this kind of side of the sponge. It looks stipply. And I'm going to load it first in the gray. So get, this, get some of that gray on the sponge first. And then I'm going to go into some blue. Just a little bit of blue. Mix it together, kind of. And I'm just going to go all around the piece. Don't worry about... Um, right now because you can always come back with the gray and cover if it's too dark like over here it's looking dark if I just keep hitting it it calms it right down so I'm gonna need a little more blue but just pounce it on your on the palette a little bit before you so that's way blue so I am going to go back into the gray and just tone it down a little. And then I'm gonna start the same process with the white. So I've calmed down some of my bluer areas. And now I'm gonna go into the white. I think I wanna put out a little more gray first. So, but this is kinda of just hit and miss and a lot of people like to use um, glaze when they do sponging. If you dress your sponge in a, in a glaze first, it kind of, it makes the paint appear, I don't know what it does actually, like it, if it layers it or what exactly it does. I haven't actually ever really gotten that involved with this process to know what it does. I just kind of do it bare. I haven't added glaze before. All right, so that's looking a little bit too obvious. So now I'm going to go back into the gray a little more and just kind of model it down more, if that makes sense. I'm trying to just have a hint of kind of those colors poking through. And we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. But that's basically it. Let's see. See, it's getting there. And you can keep playing. I mean, I would suggest letting the layers dry in between as well because it can just start to look muddy. You want it to look, um, I think the white's a little bright. So now I'm, and my table is, or my lights are very glary right now. So looking at it with the, um, I want some more blue, just a little, but looking at it, from this angle, it 
Okay, so I'm back. And the next thing we're going to do is just get the pattern roughly on here. And what I'm going to do is tell you guys a basic measurement, like about two inches up the side, maybe two and a half. I'm using this water soluble dressmaking pencil. It's kind of like a chalk pencil. Anything, but you can, I just, because I think you can see this better on camera. So I'm going up two and a half inches and I'm going to make a little mark right there. And then I'm going to go over about three and a quarter and I'm going to make, let's see how high up, oh it doesn't go very high up. Like right to here. And then I'm going to make a line, which I can't see because it's such a glare. Hold on. Two and a half. So right about here. You know what? I'm just going to use my little, um, the grid lines. That'll be good. So two and a half is right about here to three and a quarter is right about there. And this is how you're going to make your um, watermelon. Does that look right? Can you see this? I hope you can see this. And this is just going to come off with water, so don't worry about. Try to get it like as, as circular as you can. You know what I'm trying to say? Circular. And that's it. So I have a watermelon there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you're going to do it in a way that you can see it. Just make a straight edge and then a half circle. And then you have about like three blueberries. I'm going to put one right next to it. One back a little bit and one back here. They're kind of big. They're like about the size of a dime. You can put as many as you want. And then I'm going to put a couple up here, like maybe three again. One, two, three. I can't even really see this pencil. It's not really that great. Um, so I can't really see it. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we have daisies, and they're going to come up like this daisy is going to come up right here. And the petals are going to go all the way around a circle. Then there's going to be another one kind of going out here to the side. You can't see this. I, th I should use like a different, I don't, oh, like a, a regular water, like a watercolor pencil. Aha. I think that might show up. Maybe I'll try. Sorry about this. This is a technical difficulty I wasn't expecting. Oh, jeez. Okay. So this. A little better yellow and then let me see so that's one two daisies and I'm gonna put one up here we're gonna have a daisy over here and there's a daisy back here I'm not even gonna put a center because I, I might not because of the way it's lined up so hopefully you know I don't think you can see that but maybe you can um, and we're gonna just get started painting first thing I'm gonna do is take some of this rouge color and it's any I think it calls for um, some type of a salmon a light salmon color but this is rouge and this is just kind of like an undercoating and I use um, a paper plate I'm gonna get a clean paper plate I use paper plates put these little paper plates for my palette just to put the paint out on and I'll show you how I base coat I'm gonna take a flat brush this is about a number 10 flat and just get some water, blot on a paper towel and pull a little bit of a wetter slicker puddle out of that puddle. You never just go straight from this puddle to your piece. You want it, what Kirby? And I'm going to base coat this whole watermelon. But see how slick the paint is? It's not watery. You don't want it like watery, but you want it slicker and wetter than it Kirby. She's such a pain when I'm, it's like a kid. When you get on the phone, they want to talk to you. 
and I use the chisel edge of my brush. You can use a round brush to do this. You could use a filbert brush. I like using a flat brush. Um, I'm going to put my ruler over here. I like to use oops, the um, chisel edge, but see how I, pr I, I load the brush. I don't just have paint on the tip of the brush. I use all the bristles. And that's how I like to base coat. Now again, this isn't going to be as smooth as some of my pieces because um, of that sponging that we just did. The background is a little bumpy because of that. It just, I'm probably coming out of the shot. Um, just going to try and get that straight and we're going to let that dry. I'm going to just make sure this is round. And I don't like to leave, um, I'm sorry, what? What was I going to say? Ridges. So, but that's good. Now I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to put the blueberries and the centers of the strawberries on so that you can at least see where the design is going. And for that, I'm going to use a go-to number three round. The number three round is a good tool, um, a good go-to size for uh, base coating little circles and stuff. So this is um, Liberty Blue for the blueberries and Straw Yellow. What? What do you, she wants a Q-tip. My dog is so weird. She likes to pull the cotton off the Q-tips. I don't think I should give her them, but you know, she's begging. All right, so next I am going to, like I said, where'd it go? We got distracted with the q-tip so a number three round and again I go into the water shake it off blot on a paper towel and I'm gonna base coat my blueberries with this Liberty blue hey Joe can you call Kirby go see daddy go go should be in a pan I don't know what she wants oh there she goes She's coming. Oops. No. Speaking of Q-tips, I always have the Q-tip at the ready when you're painting because just for that reason, I just kind of made a a mess, and I can. Oops. And there's water there. You can always get it off before it dries if you have a Q-tip at the ready. So here's another blueberry. I gotta turn this so I can see. Yeah, right here. And I'm making them pretty big. It's kind of not really proportionate with a slice of watermelon, these blueberries. They're like the biggest blueberries in the world. So, don't, I mean, you can make yours smaller, definitely, if you want. So there's three there, and then I'm going to put three up here. My battery's blinking. Uh, that's for that, okay. I have one here. Hopefully I'm in the shot. I'll try and zoom in when I do certain techniques, but for the most part, I'm just going to do, keep it like this because sometimes I forget and then I'll be out of the shot. Where did I put the other one? Right there. And there's a glare, so I think it's just better at this distance. And circles will grow on you when you do when you paint circles, they tend to grow. So that's it, just let that dry. I'm gonna do the straw and we're gonna put in the centers of our daisies. Oh, I'm at nine minutes. And we'll do one here. This one can be a little more, um, let's see, I'm gonna do it this direction. Just more rounded, cause it's kind of facing front I guess and this one's kind of draping over so this one's going to be more oval shape and then there's one up here so see how simple it'll just come together once you can see the design and that's a huge middle but that's okay we'll be able to now you can kind of see where we're going with it we're going to put um try and clear off my desk we're going to have a branch, a little twig coming down here, 
petals there and maybe a couple of leaves a stem coming up with a couple of leaves and the daisies and this will have a branch coming across and some vines coming across here um, I could put one more I think I am going to put a flower center in this corner right here at least part of a flower is going to be behind the watermelon I just think that's good all right so we're going to let that dry before we do anything else with that let me see if my watermelon's dry it's getting there um, the next thing we're going to do is stipple our watermelon it doesn't have to be opaque um, yeah I'm going to use my I might as well use the one that's um this has soap in it I just washed it off and it has soap in it so I am going to wet this and squeeze it out and I'm pretty sure it was this maroon color let me see what other oh tomato spice I think it's tomato spice Tomato spice, it's just like a really, it's a red, but um, it's more of a watermelony red. And I'm going to squeeze this and we're going to pounce some of this on top of our watermelon and be fast so that I can get what all around it here that I just got on the background. I want to get that off before it dries. There's a little bit here. So that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're still going to shade. All right. So we're going to work on, I know my battery died. I barely have any battery left. I'm, I'm painting faster than my batteries can charge. Um, finishing up this uh, watermelon, you see how it kind of has that effect at the moment. I'm going to put a rind on with the Seminole Green. So I have three greens. I'm using the Dark Forest, Apple Green, and Seminole Green. So I'm going to put some of this on my palette and using like, I love this Donna Dewberry liner. Where did it go? Love it so much I don't know where it went. Um, that's weird. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'll be right back. Found it. It's a number two Donna Dewberry plaid liner, stroke liner, one stroke. No, it's just a liner, number two liner. And I'm going to lo uh, load it up with this green, it's Seminole green paint. And see how I pull the bristles through the puddle? I don't just take some paint and go to the piece. I'm loading the brush. And it's got water in the bristles as well so that it makes it nice and slick. And I'm going to stand it up on the point and start at the top here. And as I get down to the bottom, I'm pushing down so that it widens up. And then I'm going to pick up my brush and it didn't kind of make it all the way but I can just take the tip of my brush and fix that you can do this in as many strokes as it takes it's your watermelon it can be but this is just an easy way to do it with one quick stroke we're going to add a white line as well to that. Let me make sure I like that. Yeah, I like it. Good enough. I'm really kind of cranking these out now because I have, um, I'm working on two at a time. So while that's drying, we're going to pull some petals on our um, daisies. And I'm just going to use straight white paint. This is uh, called titanium white, but it's just white. Put it out on my palette. And I'm going to use this, it's like a number six filbert brush so a filbert has kind of like a it's called a cat's tongue too it's got a rounded tip to it but it's like a flat brush with the tips with the corners cut off so i'm going to add a little see how it's like flat 
I'm going to get some water in my brush, tap it off and blot. And again, I'm going to load it the same way I just loaded. I load all my brushes. You pull out from the edge of that a slicker wetter puddle. And I think I'm going to blot again because I just had a lot more water than I wanted. And the way, the way that I make the petals, don't worry about getting it on the center. That's fine. This one's going to be all the way around. And I just like to put down and pick up. Like there's, it's a technique where I want the end to look round, but I don't, I want this part to be pointy in the middle. And it should kind of be, yeah, it's better if it comes all the way up to the center. And this is really lopsided. You know what? Everything is more awkward when I'm filming. But I'm going to leave it. I mean, I'm not going to. It is what it is. I can always make that center bigger. But I'm just going to leave it. Um, it's way, way, way too big. But that's okay. I'll get my other one over here if I want to do it again. They're going to be like butting into each other. But that's okay. I think I'm going to just leave it. Now I'll do one more. Yeah. And then I'm going to do... I have one over here that I want to do and I'm going to do one right here behind the uh, watermelon. Just make sure your paint is slick and wet so it moves. And these strokes are something that you can definitely practice when, like, you could just do them on a sheet of paper, a bunch of strokes, because uh, they get better as you go. And I just wanted to fill in that space with a uh, daisy. I'm going to try and keep this one a little more under control. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not... This isn't realistic painting either, you guys. I'm not a realistic painter. This is just kind of fun. Fun little daisies that um, are good enough for me. I think they look cute. Oops. There we go. So we have a one peeking out here. And this one's kind of really big the way it turned out. I mean, they're all turning out different, but we're going to tint them and we're going to add little dots to, um, sorry, I'm putting, I'm changing the channel. So let's see, I'm going to leave that, but I think I'm going to go back over now with some yellow and make, and just kind of fill this in a little bit, make it a little bigger. I like that better. I need more. And this is straw. And we can do another coat um, on the blueberries too. So I still have that on my palette, the Liberty Blue. And that's what you do. You kind of skip around on the piece. While, while things are drying, you can come back and, and add another coat to other areas. So I'm going to just, I'm kind of making this a little bigger. I like it better bigger. Okay. I'm going to fill this one in. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Yep, everything's in the shot. Fill this one in a little better. Make it opaque at least, but we're still going to shade and highlight. Then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to go to the blue, the Liberty Blue, which I need to get a little more. And do the same thing with the blueberries. Just right on top of that coat, another coat, just to get it opaque. You can fix it if it wasn't round the first time. You can kind of make it a little rounder. That one I made unround. <laughs> Not unround, but just making them opaque because we're going to add tinting, highlighting, shading, and it's going to be great. All right, so that's good for now. We'll go back to our watermelon. We're going to take that same brush and the white that we just had out for our... Um, daisies, right? And I'm going to load it in the white, and there's a little red it looks like in the water, but that's okay. Get it nice and wet. You can't see me. I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to come up, and I'm not going to push as hard this time, but
but I just want to make a white stripe on top of the green one, not as wide. It's a little off. It's a little, um, I think I'm going to try and straighten out this part. It's good. I mean, that's good enough anyway, right? It's a little, made it a little wonky. I can't figure out because I'm painting around a tripod. Okay, I like that better. Oh, I just totally rubbed my finger in it right here, so I'll have to fix that. Yep. I can see right here where I just want to fix this. Good. And you can always add more green if you think it needed more green. I'm looking at it through the camera and they kind of both look the same size so I think I am going to make the green a little thicker. And I'm just loading it again with water in my brush but I think I want to pull this um, can you see me? Barely. I hope um, you guys don't mind that I'm not like zoomed in either. Okay, I like that much better. I just straightened out the shape of it. Good. Alright. That's that. Um, I think I want to do continue with that. I think the white is probably dry enough that we can do some shading. Now the shading is the first thing I want to do is show you what a float is. And I'm going to use this big brush, move this out of the way. And in order to float, what that means is you're going to, I use this angle brush. And I'm going to float color across the bristles from darkest to lightest. So I'm going to dip it in there, put it down on my palette, and kind of walk away from it. This is really wet, but see, I like to really load my brush. And then when you float, like say you're going to go around the watermelon. All the bristles on the surface, the darkest color will be up against the rind, 